Hello everyone, welcome to the hands-on part where we are going to implement the microservices in .NET Core. I have uploaded few videos related to the microservices. I hope everybody has watched it. If you haven't seen them, I would highly recommend to go through all the videos for better understanding and you will also get what, what we are going to implement. If you have already seen it, let's start writing some code. So I'm using a writer here. You can use Visual Studio. The implementation would be same. We'll be uh, adding an empty solution and uh, later we will add the APIs. Then we'll also add the API gateway. So this is the uh, empty solution I'm adding. I'm giving the name as micro service demo. This is the path I have selected. So let's create it. You can follow the same process. Okay, we have an empty solution. Let's add the project. Okay, I'm going to add .NET Core application. Okay, uh, so the path would be same. Uh, let's call it a product API. And the type would be web API. We are going to create the API here. You can add the authentication if you want. You can add the Docker spot if you want. I'm keeping it enabled. If you want to deploy your uh, APIs to the Docker, then you can enable it. It will generate the Docker file automatically. And then you can use it to, to deploy your service to the Docker. Linux is better for the Docker support. Uh, and uh, this is web API, this is SDK version, this is the language. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let's create it. Okay. Now I'm going to add the order API. I'm just uh, randomly creating uh, two APIs. They're not related, like this is how the API is going to be created. It's just uh, I'm taking two APIs. I'll not be accessing the data from the database. We'll be just uh, uh, responding the hard-coded data. We'll see that. Okay, again, I'm following the same structure. Okay, add this to the git as well. New project, this is going to be the API gateway. This is not a web API, let's call it a empty. Okay, we'll implement it. This is C sharp, this is SDK, okay. The Docker support and everything would be same. So we have added uh, two APIs and the API gateway. Okay, first we will implement the APIs, then we'll also implement the service registry for those APIs, and we'll use the service registry in the API gateway. Okay, let's delete these. This one. Let's delete this controller as well. We'll create our controller. Okay. Everything else would be same. So we have this program.cs class. This is the startup class. This is the API. So uh, this is how we are creating a builder. We add the services to the builder. So we are adding a controller here. This is the API Explorer. This is the, uh, we are adding the Swagger as well. We build the application. So now the app is ready with all the configurations we wanted to add. Once we create the app using builder.build, this app is being used to configure the services like middlewares, routing and other components. So it represents the instance of our web application. We can use it to uh, set up the infrastructure. Okay, let's add a controller here. You can uh, name it as um, product controller. Okay. Let's add the controller base this is going to be the 
parent class that we would we would be using we can mark it as a api controller okay we can also apply the route setting as well so sorry uh, this could be a api and the product okay this is the constructor we can create here currently will not having any dependencies okay so i'll be just creating uh, the methods uh, let's create it as i action result get let's create a list here where our list is equal to no uh, this is the list that we are going to you know send the data before that we should have a model uh, like the product would have some information right and I'm creating a model here this is not the right way to do that okay a model should be added in the model uh, folder okay uh, let's create it in a model folder let's follow the you know um, correct structure creating a directory here let's call it models okay let's add a class here product yes add this one okay i'm going to add a few properties here it's a product id okay let's call it a name Let's call it a description. Let's give it a price, maybe. Uh, let's uh, give the quantity as well. Okay, if you get such kind of errors, you can assign it empty. Okay, so our model is ready. Now we are going to create a list of the product model okay let's call it a list of product okay now it's done now we can initialize a list in the constructor uh, list is equal to let's remove we don't have to initialize here we can initialize it here okay now add the new product with all the information that we have sorry we have id let's call it one i'm just putting a comma here uh, we have the name let's call it product one we have a description this is product one we have a price let's say thousand we have a quantity let's say hundred okay we can add as much data we want but we'll be adding only three products okay what's going on yeah it's a three this is product two this is product two the quantity is two thousand 200 sorry uh, price is 2000 this is 3 this is also 3 price is 3000 and this is 300 now our list is ready with three products let's return this list in the get method okay so we can do return here we can add the status code the code could be uh, 200 okay i guess yeah 200 okay and we can pass the list here okay if you want you can use the try catch here if some error is occurred then you can return the status code as something else maybe uh, 500 okay and then you can put a message here you can catch it it's not a recommended you know a way of sending the exception it should be a um, you know custom message 
and you can send the message here when error has occurred because this ex dot message would send all the details and uh, it's not a right it's not a correct way to show the user maybe user won't understand it so that's it we are sending the data here let's call it as a end product id or we can call it a id list dot where column dot id is equal to id so our methods are ready now if you want you you can define the routes for these methods there are two ways that can that can be done you can use http sorry http get because it's a get method and here you can mention the route okay it's a get or maybe get all i think this is fine okay or you can use the i think we have route here so you can use the route here they both would work fine however it's recommended to use the get here because it will also mark the method as uh, get method okay so here we are passing the id we can define the id here it's better to use you know define the integer here so the id we will be getting it's uh, the integer type okay this is done uh, this is our product api is ready let's uh, add the controller in the order api call it a order controller we can add a models let the class here let's call it order okay so the order will have the order id right or id okay and maybe we'll have a product id so we are creating an order for particular product so that's where the product id comes into the picture okay so let's create the method here public by action result now we'll call it a create okay we'll pass the order Okay, it's, it's just a you know uh, demo purpose I'm, I'm creating this one it's not a feasible or the correct way of you know uh, creating order or, or having models different in both the apis if we have a model that is being shared in in two apis or multiple apis consider uh, creating all the models in a separate project so we can use it we can reference it or you can create a class library that will have all the models and you can create sdk for it and you can reference in order api and a product api so it will remove the duplicacy and whenever you make the changes uh, later in in the future in the in these models you, so you won't have to you know apply all the changes in every api so that that should be done like this okay now again we have a create or the post method here now on you see here the method name is create order but i'm just making it as a create so this is how you can do it forgot to make it a api controller we can use the route here so it's a api and the order okay so when we create order we can do one thing uh, we'll have the product id okay so in the create order let's do one thing we have a product id or we can have a product table here okay again as i told you we don't have the product information here so we'll have to create a another product okay that product will have uh, limited information i would say the product id 
okay and the name the quantity we are testing for okay so what we are gonna do we are gonna check the quantity of the particular product okay so this is called product we can mark it as string dot empty okay our order is ready okay now here we have to make the call to product api to check the quantity of particular product okay that we will be doing later but before that uh, we'll be implementing the service registry service directory and the api gateway okay i'm just creating order so when we you know uh, uh, call these apis uh, to verify whether uh, our api gateway is working or not so we can get some data so here i'm just returning some dummy data is called okay i forgot to add this is a controller base okay now it's working so i'll be returning uh, with status 200 okay and this is going to be the result so our order and the product api is done that's all for now i'll see you in the next video where we will be implementing service registry and service discovery so i'll see you there bye, -bye.